Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. The Maryland Crab Cake Tour is not over. We will uh, begin again here locally on Friday. We'll be at the Chaucer this week in Highland Town. Then next week uh, on the 17th, Johnny O, Baltimore County Executive, uh, Johnny Gashevsky, going to join us at Costas. I have my Costas shirt on earlier here. Uh, you know, I'm all crabbed up around here after uh, all, all the uh, the Ocean City places gave me shirts, blue. All I got uh, Fadeleys. I got stuff around here. And I got crab cakes on the mind. And it's crazy. Uh, my friend Karen Sagel, who invites me out to do food tastings, is how I gain weight, uh, it, back before COVID, always had events and festivals and things where we raised money for good causes and do different things. The one thing that came to me years ago that I never acted upon was this incredible crab cake tasting event. Doug Butchke, he uh, hosts these things and puts these things on. And, you know, when I talked to the scientists, Doug, about doing a crab cake tour in Maryland, they all wanted me to do it in September. And I'm like, I got to go to Vegas on my, I mean, I got game, I got football games. So I did August, but everyone knows the crabs really run best right around now, which is why my wife made crab soup today, which I had for lunch. People keep asking me, are you tired of it? Hell no, I'm putting it in soup right now. Uh, and you're not going to be tired of it next week. Doug, it's great to have you on. I'm sorry I've never told the story of crab cake tasting and what you do, but uh, tis the season. We're up on your big event in a week or two, right? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, Nestor, for having me on here. Yes, it's coming up on uh, September 21st. All right, so... Give me the genesis of your thing. I'll be happy. I've been eating crab cakes my whole life. And this was a bit of a conduit to try to bring people together for conversation, to get me out to see places like Deep Creek Lake that I had never seen and Solomon's Island and Chris Field and Smith Island, all this wild stuff I did the last month uh, with the Maryland flag, not just the state fair flag. Um, give me the genesis of crab cake tasting and an event because um, there are lots of folks that host lots of events. But I've learned this is only something you could kind of do around here or maybe Chris Field. <laughs> right, right. Pretty much around here. So this started, uh, I guess, eight years ago because this will be my seventh one and we didn't do it last year, obviously. Oh. So I uh, started about eight years ago just as an idea for an expo. And uh, I hold networking events, happy hours and things like that. And I do some larger business expos a few times a year. So I just got the idea to do this. So it kicked off. The very first one was at La Fontaine Blue in Glen Burnie. So basically, he ate a lot time, of weddings there. You know, yeah, I did yeah. the chocolate fountain. I know the whole yeah. deal over there. Yeah. You know, so um, just find local restaurants and caterers, and then they compete to see who makes the best crab cakes. And um, People buy a ticket and they come through and they sample the crab cakes and they vote for their favorite. We don't have judges because they can know who they're voting for when they walk in the door. So we don't have judges. Everybody I have gets... been a judge, by the way. So don't disparage judges. We get All fat right. and happy. Other judges. And, and I, I call it straight down the middle, man. When I, you know, good. listen, I'm not discriminating about most things, but when it comes to food. Man, you make good food. I vote for you. That's the way yeah. it goes. You know, I, yeah. I went down to Hooper's Island. I went to Suicide Bridge. I went out to Deep Creek. I've been everywhere searching for a crab cake. So get down the laurels. Not too far for me to come, Doug. No, no, not too bad. So I've moved it around over the years. Uh, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore, now Laurel this year. But uh, yeah, people vote for their favorite. And then the top, uh, the top three in each category win some prizes to put up on their wall or in their trophy case. And it started as a crab cake challenge. So I added in some local breweries and wineries and it's a trade show, right? So there's local businesses set up as an exhibitor booth and you know, a few hundred people come through and try all the samples, visit all the booths. And it's just a big fun event. Well, after two years of this, somebody said, hey, why don't you do crab, crab soup also? And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, my wife's got a pot in here right now. We'll kill it, man. She put ochre in it. We have put... Uh, wise market sponsors me so i want to give a shout out for our wise conversations and our dear friends and then we roll that produce out right now you got fresh corn i mean i didn't put any peaches in the crab soup but they're delicious right now and so my wife had never made crab soup and everywhere we went on the tour eastern shore southern maryland they were like our crab soup's pretty good and i went on the web it says crab soup's good here we tried it we did not have a 
perfect bowl of soup. And I, and I mean that with all due respect to the 15 bowls of cream of crab and Maryland crab. So my wife decided this weekend that she wanted to make some homemade crab soup. We took in recipes from everywhere. I went to Costas and I got some crabs. I went to Al's and got some crabs. I pulled the legs off. So I'd have two different kinds of recipes in the soup, right? right. And we went green bean, lima bean, white uh, corn, cabbage. Um, my wife worked out a special sort of stock and some Dijon mustard, some Worcestershire. So I literally had my first bowl of it about 20 minutes ago. It's a little young, uh, but I have not had a perfect bowl of crab soup this year so um maybe in laurel that'll be my day maybe right? in laurel maybe in laurel how many so people let's... are going to make soups and, and and crab cakes at your event doug um usually it's eight to ten uh participants this year we have seven already confirmed and we're looking to get a few more but as you probably know crab meat is out of control staffing is an issue for the restaurants even just to have their restaurant open right now so it's a bit of a challenge so it's kind of a last minute thing here where a few people are waiting just to make sure they can staff it but you're talking about the soup what's interesting is the third year we did crab soup also but I didn't stop and think it's almost impossible to compare somebody's cream of crab soup against somebody else's Maryland crab soup so then after that we had to have three competitions right Maryland crab cream of crab and crab cakes well, so there's we also now. for a real east side or the half and half, right? I mean, yeah, I you, love you, the blend, you, but you, I'm you, so far unwilling to add a fourth competition for the half and half. Next year. But I love yeah, it. That's what I order year. when I go out. It's ideas, man. Doug yeah. Butchke's here. Uh, he's a, a man of great ideas and brings people together. Crabcaketasting.com. Crabcake tasting.com by the way i bought crab cake tour and i brought club crab cake for use maybe as an entrepreneur myself uh for right. what i've done with the crab cake tour and getting out you know doug the one thing i would say for anybody that makes a crab cake and i went on this rampage all month long whether it was with ben carden or heather mazir or larry hogan uh michael Steele. i sat with all these folks Every place that makes a crab cake in this state is a small business. There's no yep. Walmart. There's no, not even Phillips. You know what I mean? Like there's no big business. These are all small local places, which I thought really spoke to my heart as a, a Maryland entrepreneur, Baltimore entrepreneur. I've been trying to bring people together. What else do you do? You, you don't just do this crab. I mean, I, I know you've been in this space bringing people together and this is just the weirdest thing the last two years. All we've ever tried to yeah. do is bring people together. And now you're yeah. like, no, I can't have people to get right. people. It's what we do. Right. We get together, you know, right. but I, I would think the last 18 months for anybody, you know, I mean, uh, my friend Greg throws the barbecue events and the beer events and whatnot. I, I can't wait to get back to larger scale, these things and support folks for bringing small businesses together and bringing right. What used to be city fairs and town halls, and yeah. I still see these festivals in Denton, Maryland, where they shut down the town square and bring it together. I saw it in Frederick uh, on yeah. the, the last Saturday of the month. You, you're trying to do that under one tent, uh, under a, a business, I mean, a pro-business yeah. sort of platform, yeah. yeah? Yeah, yeah, help local businesses meet each other and then refer business back and forth through word of mouth networking. So I hold networking happy hour events in Carroll County, Howard, Baltimore, and Anne Arundel. Usually one or two events a week going on. I have one tonight actually at Arundel Mills. And then three of these larger business expos per year. In January, I do a kickoff party for the new year and a coat drive. So we have people donate used, but gently used winter gear and rally all that stuff up and give it out to local families in need. And then in um, April, I do a showcase and tasting which is not a competition, re local restaurants just handing out samples of whatever they wanna show off. And they're all good PR events and they're all fun and everybody gets good exposure, uh, win or lose if it's a competition, but the crab cake challenge and crab soup competition is the only one that's actually a competition. Well, my palate will be the judge. Doug Butchke's here. Uh, you can find him at Crab Cake Tasting. Uh, your event's down at the racetrack, right? And I, you know, I've been down yep. there. I've seen the remodeling. Uh, yep. You're doing this in a beautiful room down there in Laurel. It's really nice room, the sports bar, ballroom. It's actually in three different rooms. So from 4 to 5 p.m., we have a speed networking thing going on, which is optional. Somebody that works for the government or is a teacher, they don't need to go networking for their business, right? So if they wanna come from four to five, there's a speed networking where you can meet a lot of people really fast. The main event is from five to 8 p.m. 
And then from eight to 10, we have a live band playing at, a, at the lounge part of the building where we announce the winners of the competition. Not just any band. It's Dave Teeth. That's my dude. Laughing cause yeah. the whole deal. I mean, by yeah. the way, D Dave uh, is my ID life rep. He actually sold me the hydrate that's inside of the wild. Nice. Uh, seriously, it's a true story. So, uh, so Dave well, will be there. If Dave Strumman. You're serving crab cakes and crab soup. I yeah, mean, you asked me off the air the same question everybody keeps asking me, which is, tired of crab cakes yet? No. Oh. No. By the way, the last thing, and I know we have a mutual friend. I mean, Al Seafood, I saw you on with, uh, yeah, with, Chad. with, uh, with Chad the other day on BAL. Um, and so I, I've seen Chad twice this week. Um, Chad, I went to get crabs from from Pete and Nick over at Costas and to get the, the cream spinach that they have. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, Chad is trying to bring his business back to life at Al's and Dundalk and German Hill Road. And I've known his family for 40 years and uh, trying to help him a little bit. So I got a couple of crabs from both places. I use them in the crab soup. But Chad says to me, I'm going to do my best Chad now. So he's, he's going to get pissed at me, but I'm going to do. Hey, 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 give me. Hey, give me a minute. I got I, hold on. Let me go in the fridge. He comes out with a pound of crab meat. He's like, hey, hey, this was the crab meat I used with Doug on BAL. I can't sell it. You know, I just make it a really good crab case. Here, put this in your crab soup. So literally, the crab that I just ate in the crab soup was the same crab you were in front of 48 hours ago at BAL promoting your event. That, that Maryland crab meat yeah. is what I'm consuming. And my wife said to me, swear to God, she made a huge thing of uh, crab soup. She said to me, we got to use the crab meat before like Friday. We might need to make some crab cakes. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> we're not making any crab cakes. We're dumping that crab meat in that soup. We're going to do it up. Um, so for you, do you, I, and I don't, uh, separation of church and state. I, mean, I do business with Costas and I do business with Fadley's. I've had their crab cakes on the tour. I'm going to be at Costas next week. We're going to be at the Chaucer in Highland Town on Friday, this Friday, the 10th, kicking it off with Zeke Cohen and uh, also the, um, the executive director of the Enoch Pratt Free Library. Heidi Daniels is going to come out talk about the Zappa statue because you know I got a rock and roll heart dog but uh, it's for so I ask everyone do you have a crab cake profile that like are you mustardy creamy fried broiled like I learned a lot a lot a lot a lot about crab cakes the last month and what my profile is and one of the things my wife wants me to do is like work on my own recipe that's based on the recipes that I've enjoyed and the techniques that I've enjoyed the most but but give me straight do you have a place like if Michael Jordan comes to town and you got to entertain him or Barack Obama or whoever your celebrity, where would you take said celebrity for a crab cake in your world? Where's the Butchkey family crab cake? Yeah, well, Al Seafood certainly has a great one. They uh, won the competition two years ago in 2019. So Wait, they definitely my have wife, a great one. My wife has known them for 18 years, 18 and a half years we've been married. She yeah. never had a crab cake at Al's until day 29 of the tour. This is last Sunday, day, August 29th. He made the crab cake, broiled it. He has some wine concoction in, in the water that steams it and broils it. And my wife went like, after eating crab cakes for 29 days, my wife went crazy for, for Chad's crab cake at Al's Seafood. So, no BS. Like, right. it's a great <clears throat> crab cake he serves there. I called it a Highland Town crab cake. He called it a Hooper's Island crab cake. Right, right. <laughs> so definitely broiled over fried in my world. Um, not too much breading. A lot of people want to put the filler in, especially with uh, crab meat pricing right now. So it's got to have some some lump crab meat in there. Uh, so, yeah, that, that's kind of my go-to. Uh, Chad uses saltine crackers as the bread crumbs in there so that's Binder. a little secret ingredient right. to bind it together so that way you're not Fadley's using uses that breading. too so I, you know Fadley's i talk to all these also. people right i talk to these folks they give me a part of the recipe you know they don't give me the whole thing i right. went down to smith <laughs> island doug i went uh, over to tylerton on a boat you know it took an hour we get over to this little island 37 people live there and Duke uh, Marshall served me a fried crab cake where he uses all parts of the crab, right? So that's his secret. And he had, he said, I'm not going to tell you what's in it. He uses black pepper, coarse <laughs> black pepper. It did not profile like a Chesapeake Bay 
J.O. Old Bay. It didn't have that profile. It tasted different. And I think it's amazing what people – you say, well, I got seven crab cakes. If you get the 10, great. They'll all be different. That's the one thing you can count on. Every crab cake's made differently. Correct. And Fadley's does have a great one there at Lexington Market. And I spoke to her years ago, maybe around the third or fourth competition. She was very interested in doing this, but she wanted me to make it a rule that all of the competitors had to use Maryland crab meat, which I get it and I appreciate it, but I'm not in their budget world and I don't know where they get stuff from. So I was I told her I'm very sorry, but I can't force you them know to what? buy the crab meat somewhere. She has been defiant on that about local. Oh, boy. She inspired the tour for me to go around the state. And uh, quite frankly, I mean, I spent a lot of time now with you know the crabbing community and people and you know, people that lobby on their behalf to some degree and, and JM Clayton were, you know, workers and H2B visas and like, just, it, it's a very complicated thing, you know, and it's yep. really, it's an important part of our economy. And I think yep, I've, if I I've learned nothing else, I've learned that over the last six months that's sort of sticking together and taking care of each other. The, the fact of the matter is, and everybody will tell you this, we don't have enough crabs in the Bay to service how many people want a crab cake. That's Correct. the truth. Correct. Yeah, but oh, she was a very sure. nice lady, and they have great crab cakes, and I've had them many times. Oh, they're delicious. There's no doubt yeah. about it. So tell me more about your vendors. Who who all's coming? And give me a little bit more on, like, showing up, because, like, I'm thinking of coming, Doug. I, I don't know if you've heard. I'm a crab cake guy. <laughs> I've heard, and I'm glad, and I hope you can make it. So, yeah, the um, the event is from 4 to 8 p.m. I said the first hour is the speed networking for those that want to take advantage of it. We do have probably about 50 local exhibitor booths and maybe seven or eight sponsors. So that, that same first hour from four to five in the ballroom will be an exhibitor and sponsor reception. So they can meet each other. They can try the crab cakes and sample the beer and the crab soup without having to wait in line behind 10 attendees and then race back to their table. So that hour is just for them. I like and waiting then, in line. I meet people when I'm in line. You know what I mean? I right. mean, I, I do. But I'm going to be elbowed up and masked out because that's the way I'm rolling these days. You that's know, okay. So. That's all right. So, yeah, it's um, Laurel Park, second floor, easy access, escalators, elevators, ramps. You don't even need to go up one step to get uh, to the place. And it's a big fun event we do every year. It's, um, you know, tickets are $25. But I'm um, telling people on these broadcasts that uh, Karen is helping me get in front of, if you use promo code NFFF, that's for National Fallen Firefighters Foundation, then they save $5 on the ticket and $5 goes to the foundation. They help raise money to support families and coworkers of firefighters who die in the line of duty. And this is the 20 year anniversary of 9-11, so it felt like a good foundation of support this year. Actually, I'm going to be at Raven Stadium this Saturday doing their memorial stair climb where we walk up an equal number of steps equal to the World Trade Center to kind of appreciate what those guys have to do. Um, and then we also have a silent auction and the proceeds from that will benefit the foundation also. So, Doug, yeah. I appreciate you, man. You're doing good work, and I hope to get down there on the 21st. Tuesday, the 21st, 4 to 8. Come on down, see Dave Teef, uh, uh, strum the guitar. Or uh, have a crab cake if I put you in the mood for one for this week. It costs us next week. If you're missing out, come on down uh, and join us. Um, you know, it's nice to get out. It's nice to see people again. It's nice to elbow bump once in a while. Uh, but it's even better to, uh, man, that's a crab cake night. Seven or eight different crab cakes, trying it all out, figuring it all out, filling out my little form for uh, yeah. who the winner will be. So, uh, yeah. And it's good to get down to Laurel anytime, too. i got some good members down there. Doug, and then Captain uh, Defense will be there. Fancy Clancy will be there. So we got some Orioles and Ravens uh, people in the house, too. Well, if Cat and D's there, you know, who do you think gave him all the defense signs back in the day? He'll tell I, you, I Wes bet. will tell you, yeah. you know. Yeah. And of course, Fancy Clancy, you know, if it's not. His, you brew, know. his beer will be there too. We'll have his brewery. I have not samples. had his beer yet because I haven't been fantastic. to I'm a, right. I'm a boring Bud Light kind of beer drinker, but his Pilsner beer is excellent. If it's they a will Pilsner, be on, they'll be handing out samples. Well, if Fancy's giving me a sample, then we will. There'll be social media uh, displayed that evening yes. with me and Fancy Clancy. Yes. 
Doug, I appreciate you, man. Go, go out to Crab Cake Tasting, the event's on the 21st. Uh, Doug's been a friend. It's been a long time coming that I have him on the program, so I uh, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate Karen setting it all up, and uh, I'll, I'll be down there filling my belly. By the way, I've lost five pounds since the end of the tour, so I, I gained about nine or ten. I'm trying to move backwards. I had Wise Markets on, the dietitian here. They're trying to do back to school, and it turned out to be – getting Nestor back into size 32, you know, because yep. too many crab cakes filled me. Well, the, pro- Doug, the problem wasn't the crab cakes and it wasn't the broiled or the fried. It really wasn't because I didn't eat any red meat the whole month. There's a lot of things. The problem was fries or chips. No, no, no. You're our guest. You have to have dessert here. Right. Have the cake, have the pie, have the pudding, have the muffins. Yep. So that was the problem. So the add ons. Exactly. And, and more than that, here, have a sandwich. And, you know, these these Western Maryland and Eastern Shore people, very friendly people. They're like my my father in Scranton, Pennsylvania. They put white bread on the table. You know, they just drop like a loaf of bread on the table before the whole party begins. So uh, I put on some LB. So I'm cutting down. I'm going to go to crab balls at your thing. I'm not going to go full crab cake, but okay. I am looking forward to it. Great concept. Great to bring people together. Uh, and I'm, I call it Prince George's County because Michael Steele and Donna Edwards both smacked me around last month when I called it PG. PG. They didn't like when I called no, it PG. No, they don't like that. Yeah, so yeah. it's Prince. I didn't know that till I started calling it PG in front of, in front of something. And I said, wait do you hear one, how upset you'll get when I call the Washington football team by right. their God-given name. All right. Doug, we'll see you next Tuesday, okay? Be well. All right. Thank you, sir. Take Doug care. Doug Butchke joining us here. They, they let him on BAL with Chad. I mean, I've had him and Chad separately here this week, but the crab meat, we're all in it together. Crab cake tasting, the way to find him. You can find me uh, anywhere the internet is, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat. My hashtag was Crab Cake Tour. You can find me there and all the stuff we're doing at the Chaucer and at uh, Costas and beyond as football season gets rocking and I roll to Las Vegas. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570. Taos in Baltimore. We never stop talking crab cakes and beating the Chiefs and uh, Monday night football and Tuesday afternoon crab cakes.